Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we'll take a look at some basic timeline compositing techniques. We'll look briefly at the different capabilities of the axis effect, and we'll go about recreating some simple timeline effects tasks. Right, let's jump into Smoke and take a look. We'll be exploring a number of simple timeline compositing tasks in this episode. This will be about what you can achieve using the basic timeline effects and not using the advanced capabilities of Smoke's Connect FX toolset. When performing some simple compositing tasks in Smoke 2013, there is an effect tool that gets used most often. The Axis effect is Smoke's all-in-one tool that performs a number of different tasks. You can manipulate a layer in three-dimensional space with traditional transformation controls, but also with ability to deform the actual layer surface in 3D space. 3D text can be added as well as lights to enhance a single layer. There's tracking and stabilization tools, keying and masking modules, and of course there's traditional tools such as cropping, corner pinning, and the ability to apply shadows to a layer. As you can see, the Axis tool is very powerful indeed. It must be pointed out that when compositing in the timeline, the layers do not interact directly with each other. For true 3D compositing with layer and scene interaction, the Action node in Connect Effects is the tool to be using. We'll explore the capabilities of Action, Smoke's 3D compositor, in a later episode. Now let's take a look at some effect tasks you can perform using simple timeline compositing and effects. Here's a simple picture-in-picture -picture effect created in the timeline using two video layers. Let's recreate the same effect. First, create a new video track if you don't already have one, and add a video clip above the chosen segment on the timeline. Trim the new clip if need be to match the duration of the clip below. If you hold down shift while you trim, the layer will snap to the edit point beneath. With the clip on top selected, hit Control tab to activate the effect menu chooser. Select the axis tool. A quick way of entering the advanced editor is to double click the segment straight after adding the effect. First, let's quickly familiarize ourselves with the Axis tool. It's made up of three main sections, Objects, Lights, and Camera. The Object section is where we can adjust the layer's transformation, perform tracking and stabilization, accessing keying and masking tools, along with layer blending and transparency, and various controls to manipulate and warp the image surface itself. In the Light section, we can enable a single light source and add shading and light effects to a layer and the camera section lets us view our layer from a different position using the camera controls. To create a simple picture-in-picture -picture type effect, use the transformation controls here to resize and reposition your picture. Click Exit to return back to the timeline and hit the backslash key to render. Here's a split screen type effect. Let's rebuild this one using the Axis tool of course. We know that we will be adjusting all three layers here, so instead of adding an axis tool to each layer one by one, here's a handy tip to add the axis effect to all three layers at once. Select the first layer, hold down shift and select the last layer so that all three layers are now highlighted. Hit control tab to bring the effect type menu up and select axis. As you can see, the effect has been applied to all of the selected layers. Now deselect all the layers by clicking outside the timeline. Double click the top segment to enter the advanced editor for the axis tool. Let's reposition this layer to the top left of screen and make it about half its size. To be able to reuse an effect for a single layer again, we can save the setups for the axis tool. Click the save button, seen here, this will take you to the default settings directory for the axis tool. Give it a descriptive name so that it's easy to identify when recalling the effect later. The name you gave this setup is displayed here next to the save button. Right, let's exit back to the timeline and double click the next layer down to jump into the axis effect for this layer. Let's resize and reposition this layer to the top right hand corner. Use the effect we saved previously as a starting point. Click load. Double click the effect we previously saved. This places the layer in the same position and has been resized to the same value. All we need to do now is slide the layer across to the right. Now onto the last segment. All we need to do is reposition and crop the bottom layer. Exit back to the timeline and double click the bottom segment. The crop controls are accessed here by accessing the crop menu. The menu to adjust the crop settings now appears back over here in place of the transformation controls. 
adjust the top and bottom crop values to suit. If you need to reposition the image vertically, you'll need to return back to the transformation controls. Select the crop menu again to take you back to the transform menu. Here's something you may do in your current editor to give your footage a quick stylized look. Layer blend modes, whereby you simply duplicate your shot and place it on the video track above. Applying different blending modes quickly changes the style of the shot. To duplicate your shot, hold down Option and Shift and drag the segment upwards. The duplicated segment should snap to the same starting point as the edit below. Remember the quick way to apply a timeline effect is by hitting the shortcut Control tab. Select the Axis tool. Blend modes can be accessed directly from the effect bar above the timeline. Over on the right hand side, click the Blend drop down. Here are all the blend modes available to the Axis tool on the timeline. You will notice that a number of the traditional blend modes that you may normally use are missing from this list. Other blend modes such as Overlay, Hard Light and Soft Light are available inside Connect Effects, Smoke's Advanced Effects workspace. We'll be exploring the effect capabilities of Connect Effects in the next series of videos. Switch the blend mode to Screen. Now to make the highlights of the image glow, we'll need to apply some blurring to this top layer. Enter the Advanced Editor for the Access Tool. Over here are the Layer Blur controls. Increase the value to achieve the desired result. Here's a useful tip. If you want to blur both the X and Y values at the same time, hold down Option and Shift as you drag on either of the values. Change the blur type to Gaussian to give you a more smoother blurring of the image. If you wish, you can now also alter the mix between the two layers. Adjusting the transparency value allows you to show more or less of the effect. As you increase the transparency, you are now seeing more of the layer beneath. To enhance the effect, you could even add a color corrector to further tweak the style of the image. Remember, you can use the focus point on the timeline indicator to switch between the tracks to show you the result of adding the second layer. Sometimes you may be provided with mats that have been made in another application. Let's take a look at how we attach mats to a video layer in the timeline. Here we have a texture placed over our video clip. We have been provided with this black and white image to be used as a mask for the texture. To apply a mat to a layer we need to apply the multifunction axis tool. Here on the effect bar click the mat button. The cursor has turned to a blue arrow. This means select the image to be used as a mat. Smoke switches to desktop icon view, enabling you to visually choose a matte source. Click on the top left of the clip icon to select. We have the ability to further adjust the matte in the Axis Advanced Editor. In the Transform controls, activate Matte. The matte can be modified by adjusting the transform values. Let's also activate a drop shadow. Underneath Shadow is where we toggle the appearance of a shadow. With the shadow activated, you can now click the shadow button above which activates the transform controls for the shadow itself. The color, softness and transparency of the shadow is adjusted over here. We can use timeline compositing to help us color correct various parts of an image. By stacking the same layer up multiple times and applying a color corrector and a mask to each layer, we can isolate a different part of the image to correct. Let's start by duplicating the layer. Pressing Option plus Shift and dragging upwards copies the clip up to the next track. Add a color corrector to this clip. In this example, let's increase the saturation of the water. Now let's add a mask to have the color adjustment only affect the water. From the Effects pop-up menu, choose Wipe. This adds a default animated wipe that lasts the length of the clip. Remove this wipe by clicking Delete and create a new mask shape by clicking Add. Click and draw a mask around the area of interest, trying to keep the mask points to a minimum. Apply a small amount of offset to create a nice blend between the color correction and the uncorrected region. You can keep adding as many layers as you wish by adding color correctors and masks to apply separate corrections to different parts of the picture. By moving the focus point upwards, we can see the result that each color correction adds to our shot. To tidy up your timeline after you've applied a number of corrections, Select all of the stacked clips, and then from the Timeline Gear menu, choose Contain Selection. This is like creating a nest in FCP7. Double-clicking on this single segment will open the layers up again inside of their own Timeline tab. This blue tab indicates that it is a container. After making changes inside of this container, returning to your timeline, you can see the change is visible. 
Finally, let's take a quick look at performing keying directly in the timeline of Smoke 2013. Here is a green screen clip placed over a background. No prizes for guessing which effect tool we apply to help composite the green screen over our background. Add the Axis tool. Enter the Advanced Editor. Inside the Axis tool, the Kia menu is located over in the middle of the screen. Click on Kia. By default, the Kia is in luminance mode. We need to change the key mode to be able to select the color we wish to remove. Select the Master Kia from the top of the menu. The next step is to choose the color we would like the Kia to remove. Select this color pot on the left. The cursor switches to a color picker. Choose an area of the green that represents the most dominant shade of green that is visible. Here's some keyboard shortcuts that you will use over and over again when compositing in smoke. F1 will show you the front layer. For example, this lets us see the original image. F2 displays the background. F3 displays the matte of the current layer. And finally, F4 shows the final result of the composited images. Toggle between F3, the matte view, and F4, the result, to see the results of your key. To adjust parts of the key that are not working so well, we can use the patch tool. Under the sampling menu here at the bottom, select patch 1. Now click on a problem area of the mat. The controls for patch 1 are now activated. Smoke will automatically adjust the patch to black or white depending on your selection. If it chooses the wrong colour, you can change it here. You can also adjust the range and softness of the selection you made. There are three different levels of patching available to help you tweak your key. To remove any large unwanted areas from the key, we can also add a mask. Select the G-Mask menu and then select Add. Using the cursor, we can now plot points to create a mask that will remove parts of the image. Click on the first mask point again to close the mask. The mask is white, but we want this area to be black. Slide the color field all the way down to zero. By default, Smoke applies an automatic spill correction, removing any unwanted green fringing from your foreground. By toggling the Auto CC box off and on, you can view the result of the spill color correction. As a last resort, there are matte tools available here to shrink, erode and blur your key. As you can see, Smoke has many tools you can apply at the timeline level. In the coming episodes, we'll explore Connect Effects, Smoke's powerful node-based compositing environment. Just a reminder that Smoke 2013 is presently pre-release software and features seen in this episode may change come the final release. The Axis Effect is Smoke's multi-purpose tool that enables you to perform a number of different tasks. The Advanced Editor exposes you to the full feature set of the Axis tool. Make sure you head over to the Smoke 2013 forum at the area. You can share your experiences and make some suggestions to help shape the future of the software. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future episodes that help you get up to speed on the basics, fast. Uh.